welcome to WTV. I'm Jennifer Kirkshank. And I'm Jack Morse. Thanks for joining us. We got a great show coming up for you today with many great stories. We'll take you to the reopening of a popular donut shop and see some students giving back with a park cleanup. As well as our segment, Better Halifax. But before that, Joshua Saunders at the news desk. What's in the news, Joshua? Thank you, Jen and Jack. The Downtown Dartmouth Business Commission has partnered up with United Way Halifax to host the first ever Downtown Dartmouth Ice Festival. The cold air did not deter the large group of people from enjoying the live sculpting of 15 ice fixtures, free live entertainment, or the arts exhibit. And really it's just a celebration of local love uh, to warm people's hearts uh, on what's, you know, the coldest month of the year. Uh, so encouraging local residences and businesses to get involved and uh, uh, support local, give locally to United Way and uh, just have, have some fun in the winter. The purpose of the event was to bring the community together, enjoy local art and give support to United Way. The train year general store, a local goods and gift store, donated 10% of its sales on Saturday to United Way. Downtown Dartmouth Businesses Commissions and United Way Halifax are planning on hosting this event next January. A public information session has taken place at the North Woodside Community Center on Friday. Nearby residents met with an engineer to see the plans behind the new proposed sidewalks that will be built on Chadwick Street and Glenview Drive. A number of people who showed up were excited about the changes. So the street needs an upgrade, it needs some attention, the drainage is not good. So a sidewalk would help both in terms of people walking on the street, because there are no sidewalks, and it's also going to make the street look uh, nicer as well. So it'll deal with engineering issues and uh, some pedestrian issues. So I think, it, I think residents will likely be pleased. The sidewalks are currently pending budget approval from City Council. If they are approved, then construction will begin in May or June. Now time for news across the bridge. A petition has been started by some unhappy residents on streets surrounding Shibakdo Road. WM Fair's architects have designs for a five-story building plus a penthouse on the corner of Shibakdo and Elm Street. Some nearby residents do not want it to be a part of their neighborhood. The plans are to tear down two houses to enlarge the lot size for the apartments. The online peti petition has 30 signatures and Melanie Jones has been going door to door. Well, first off, uh, um, will be well. The construction is going to be horrendous, you know, for the neighbors. But noise from all the usage up there, uh, light pollution, traffic, and parking are the biggest. This is a na residential neighborhood with a lot of children. WTV has been told residents have tried to sell their properties, but have uh, have been unsuccessful because of these proposed buildings. Residents say they would like to see a three-story building instead of five. And finally. Some people are going on a different kind of Valentine's Day date at the first ever We Dating event at High Life Social Club. Ten men and ten, ten women are meeting today on Valentine's Day for a speed dating event. Organizers say pot smoking can be an issue for relationships for some, so this event puts it on the table right away. The cannabis issue is something that can, can actually end the dating between two people by, you know, getting that all up. Uh, in the open right away it's gonna just I think help the relationship. Chris says he wants to have a similar Valentine's Day event every year and he also plans to have a weed dating event every month. That's this week WTV News back to you Jen and Jack. Thanks Joshua. Talk about All right to go home hungry. Now it's time for a quick break. Still to come if you've ever wanted to do yoga but can't get an hour away from your cats, then we've got a surprise for you. But first, we'll take you behind the scenes for the Vandal Donuts reopening. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. For the month of February, Halifax is flying the Pan-African flag in Grand Parade. This African Heritage Month is the first time the flag is being flown by the city. After a bit of a hiatus, Vandal Donuts has reopened in the North End. WTV Sean McDougall is at the shop, known for its unique and colorful donuts. Tell us more, Sean. Thanks, Jen and Jack. On November 7th last year, Vandal Donuts closed down in its former location inside Gus's Pub in Halifax. After a three-month hiatus, they've reopened with a new location and are cooking up the same signature treats. Twenty people lined up in the cold on Sunday morning 
waiting to get some of the colorful treats like the pink frosted signature donut known as the Homer. I'm obsessed. I started going in December 2017 when they had been open. They might have been open a couple of months by then and I saw the Mr. Hankey donut on Instagram and I love Mr. Hankey so I drove from Clayton Park just to get that donut and I went back religiously every Saturday until they closed. The shop had a constant lineup out the door of folks waiting to get some donuts, which range in price from $1.85 to $4.25. It kept the staff busy on Sunday until selling out shortly after 1 p.m. Sonia Mota is one of the co-founders of Vandal Donuts. She says that since Vandal originally opened, there's only been one issue. Troubles? There hasn't been a lot of troubles with, except for trying to keep up with demand, which mm -hmm. I guess is a pretty good issue to have as a small business owner, but mm -hmm. I said that's the biggest one, is keeping up production. Mota and her business partner, Nicole Tufts, were in the kitchen opening day, helping put out over 3,000 donuts. Tufts says some health concerns she had late last year were part of the reason Vandal had to shut down. The lease Vandal had for its space in Gus's pub had also expired. Even though two other donut shops are opening soon in Halifax, Tufts says she's not worried. Um, what are your concerns about the competition? None. None at all? Zero percent. Okay. No concern. Melissa Mosier was one of the people who got a box of donuts before Vandal's shelves were cleaned out on opening day. Yeah, the kids are pretty soaked for yeah. fancy donuts. <laughs> And Jen and Jack, this new location is the former home of the 244 takeout restaurant. The owners partnered with Moda and Tufts to give Vandal Donuts a brand new home. Back to you in the newsroom. Thanks, Sean. Jack, can you imagine anything more romantic than a Valentine's Day hike? Um, we live in Nova Scotia and it's February, so anything inside. Well, WTV's Olabanga Akatokan found a group of people who aren't afraid of the cold. Take a look. For many people, a typical day ends at sundown. However, on Saturday, Hike Nova Scotia brought together families and individuals to showcase an exciting way to extend the day's fun. Yes, this is the first dark chocolate hike event, um, and uh, we're quite excited. Just have a nice time enjoying each other's company and come in and have some treats and chocolate in honor of Valentine's Day. Before the night hike commenced, ample time was invested in activities such as registration, hiking trail etiquette, and general safety instructions. Um, people really like to go into the woods at nighttime to, um, to have a night hike and pair it with chocolate because it's close to Valentine's Day and chocolate and Valentine's Day kind of go together. Thank you so much everyone and uh, continue to enjoy your cookies and your hot chocolate. The event, which was jointly organized by Young Naturalist Club of Nova Scotia, provided awareness about our nocturnal environment. We really think this is a great uh, opportunity to do a little bit of education. So in this case, it's about owls and astronomy. We have some astronomers outside. So there's an educational component, but it's also fun. You're getting outside, you're on a hike, you're with your family. Um, so it's a great fit. Apart from the common belief that hiking encourages physical and mental health while promoting social well-being, nighttime hiking serves as an opportunity to enlighten younger children. Uh, I think any time you get kids out at night, you show them that it's a safe place to get out, that there's another world to experience at night, and that they are welcome in that world, that it's safe to get out there and explore it. Ulubenga Akintokun, WTV News. Thanks, Benga. So, Jen, I went to return some bottles in Halifax this week, and I found something. What's that, Jack? Well, I found a program that's been helping at-risk youth get jobs, or get back to school for 25 years. And I get a few bucks for my bottles. Well, let's take a look. On an unassuming street in downtown Halifax, there's Enviro Depot taking in the same bottles and cans as every other exchange in the city. But this one is a little different. It's staffed by Youth Live, a city program designed to help at-risk youth develop job skills. The 21-week program focuses on soft skills like motivation, confidence, and time management. Well, when I first started coming to the program, I, I could barely show up. But now I'm here like every morning early, so. 
Participants are between 16 and 24, not in school, and struggling to find work. They get a small honoraria, but the real benefit of the program is skills development. Lee Moore took the helm in 2016. He's already made some changes to make it easier for former participants to get jobs as staff once they've finished. And, since last year, he's been working to expand the program with external co-ops. It's very different experience is what we're trying to go for with those, um, with the ultimate goal of that kind of enriched experience um, throughout the program. So it's not just that labor, labor piece. Max Hody is a staff member and a former participant. He says he sees himself in the youth he coaches. I absolutely do. I see a lot of the same problems that I had coming in and I find it easy to relate like when somebody's having a, a bad day. Some participants say they started coming here because they were tired of not moving forward in their lives. Well I really needed to start doing something so like and this is going to help me like towards like getting a job afterwards so like it's a really good start towards working. Moore says he's looking forward to seeing how his changes affect the participants who finish the program. Jack Morse, WTV News, Halifax. Thanks, Jack. What a great program. Well, Jen, they aren't the only young people helping to clean up the city. Management students from Dalhousie were in Point Pleasant Park on the weekend. But they weren't there for an early Valentine's Day picnic. They decided to make the park a little bit nicer. WTV's Tyler Hoods has more. Dalhousie students helped the environment with a park cleanup at Point Pleasant Park. Maddie Stinson was one of the students who took part. I think any small initiative like this always makes a little bit of change in the community. If people see what we're doing. We've had a lot of people come and ask us what we're doing. Um, strangers picking up trash for us and bringing it to us. Uh, it was really nice to see. The cleanup started at the beach and continued along the shoreline. Approximately 15 people from Dalhousie attended the cleanup, despite the cold weather. The event was led by Emily McKay, who is a first-year management student. She created the project for her interdisciplinary management class, where they are learning about environmentalism and sustainability. She says most of the garbage they picked up was plastic. We found a lot of bottle caps, cigarette butts, little pieces of plastic ropes, and there's just a lot of little pieces of plastic. A lot that we can't get out because they're all frozen in the ground. People from the wider South End community joined the students in their project to clean the park. Kristen Pulsfer saw the event on Facebook. Uh, I find environmental issues are really important to me and I wanted to support my friend in her efforts to make a difference in the community and I find when the, everyone works together it can make a much bigger impact. Emily McKay and the other members of the team hope to do more park cleanups in the future but plan to wait for warmer weather to make the event even more of a success. Tyler Hood's WTV News, Halifax. Thanks, Tyler. You know, Jen, some people say the explosion of home video game consoles and online gaming killed the arcade. But as WTV's Luke Yoho found out, there's a Halifax bar where you can get a blast from the past. Luke? Thanks, Jack. Pinball enthusiasts have found a new home at Propeller's recently renovated basement barcade, the first of its kind in Halifax. The league gathers every Monday to pull plungers and pound flippers in pursuits of bonuses and multi-balls. For Matt Whalen, a league board member, the new space is just what the league's been looking for. Uh, it's amazing to have uh, a place that we can, you know, that we can have to ourselves, kind of. Um, we've, been, we've been wanting to play in a, in a public arcade or, you know, barcade preferably for several years. Um, and, you know, it takes, it takes someone with vision and it takes somebody with a little bit of courage um, like Propeller to, to say, you know what, we're going to take this risk and we're going to open up an arcade. Prior to Propeller's barcade opening, these titans of tilt hop garages and bar rooms across the city before finding their neon and steel utopia. Chantal Casey, another league member, says the new space is inviting. One of the issues, especially in the wintertime, is trying to find a place to have our tournaments. So we were having hosted tournaments at people's houses, which is really great, but a lot of the times um, you can't fit a whole lot of people in a confined space, which is an issue. Besides gathering for their mutual love of pinball, players like Sasha Stevens also come for the camaraderie. It's really welcoming. Actually, since I've moved to Halifax, it's been like one of the most exciting things that I look forward to every week. Um, it's, very, like, it's very regular, and once you get here, people learn your name really quick because you literally write it down on a piece of paper every single time, and people know each other, and it's a really friendly place. League members can also compete in international Flipper Pinball Association sanctioned events, contributing to their international and provincial ranks. Jack and Jen, future events 
are private or have yet to be declared. However, the league will finish off the winter season this month with a finals tournament on February 25th. Back to you. Thanks, Luke. Time for another break, but don't go anywhere. Coming up in our... An artist helping out animals in need. And this. Hi, I'm Rakeem Simmons from CCKC, and I hosted Between Two Bridges this week. I spoke to the band Good Dear Good about what it's like to be an up-and-coming band in Halifax. Stay tuned. Well, Jen, it's a beautiful and clear day today. I'm really glad the stormy weather is now over. You're right about that. But remember, it's still cold and a little icy out there. Be careful. So, Jen, what's the deal with animal yoga? I've seen dog, cat, rabbit, goat. Why are people doing yoga with animals? Well, Jack, animal yoga is a growing trend. I had the opportunity to actually go to a cat yoga session. Here, take a look. This is yoga with cats. This is one of the new animal yoga sessions at Halifax Yoga. Laura Gibson is the teacher and manager of the session. She says the animal classes are popular because they allow people to relax with the added comfort of animals. Just a big draw in for people because being able to practice with animals is really, really therapeutic. So it gets to incorporate both yoga and being able to, you know, play or touch or just be around something that makes them feel good. This hour-long cat yoga session is for people of all skill levels to allow individuals to try out the class. The Dartmouth SPCA partnered with Halifax Yoga for this session. The SPCA provided the six-week-old kittens for the class. We're so excited about it. I mean, Halifax Yoga is all about promoting like personal well-being, and we're all about promoting well-being for animals. So it kind of seemed like a natural partnership, um, and it's a local business supporting local animals in need. The hope for the partnership is to promote adopting animals in need. The kittens at the class will be available to adopt in a few weeks once they are older. And I'm all about helping the animals. It's a huge passion of mine, so we collaborated. During the class, the kittens walk around and visit the participants. And Gibson says because they're curious, they have almost caused people to trip. So they made for some interesting moments. And puppies. And all proceeds are donated to the SPCA. Like I love, I love animals and I really wanted to in some way be able to give back a little bit. started off, I painted one of the dogs here at uh, Homer Bound, and uh, when I was ready to kind of release the prints, I thought it kind of only made sense that I, I'm going to give something back to the shelter since it was their photo I worked from. Uh, so that kind of started me in the direction of uh, trying to raise money for animal rescues and shelters locally. Every week I would do a different watercolor painting and I would auction it off to raise money for a different charity. The watercolors started uh, at the beginning of 2017. I thought that originally it would be a great way to motivate me to paint often, so I was auctioning them off, really small ones, and as I got better, they got bigger, and I decided to like do a, a rescue a month and, and actually set up a schedule and commit to it for the whole year. Every watercolor that I painted, uh, the auction would start at $45. The $45 would go to me, and then everything that was bid above that would go to the rescue. Sometimes I would do some pet portraits and stuff like that, and those were normally the ones that, that blew up pretty big and, and made the biggest donations. You know, these rescues, they put in so much time and effort to help these animals, and it just made sense to, to try and help them support what they're doing. I feel like every every animal has its own unique personality. They're always so full of joy. It makes me think of color and I just I love to capture that and try to, you know, put it on canvas or paper and just to, you know, kind of share that spark that each animal has. I have so many things that I, I want to move forward with. I have a lot of things in the future that I'd really like to tackle and you know, like incorporate into my business. I'm Danny and by using art to support local animal charities is how I'm making a better Halifax. That was Better Halifax. Jen, did you know that they give away part of the proceeds from every photo, painting rather, to charity? That's awesome. But now we're going to head over to the NSCC student radio station, CCKC, The Platypus. Rakeem Simmons sat down with the band Good Dear Good. I don't want to go. Whoa, whoa, yeah, I need to stay.
how did the four of you meet and uh, come together as a band? Uh, through the merch program uh, at NSCC, yeah, we uh, all attended that and sort of met through there. And then just um, throughout the year, we, we wanted to uh, make a band for a while, um, all of us sort of individually. And then as time went on, we ended up sort of coming together and making our own project out of it. Was there a lot of encouragement from your instructors to kind of form together? Uh, not really. I, I know all of them did want us to like pers pursue music after school and everything. Um, and so when they heard about the band, when they heard that we were all together, they were pretty excited about it, which is nice to hear. <laughs> When did you guys first know that music was your thing? I loved being in musicals in high school and uh, writing my own songs and stuff. And so music arts um, kind of seemed like the program for me. And then it just, from there, kind of took off. I realized I loved performing and being in bands and stuff. I was always like a sucker for classical music like, my <laughs> whole life growing up. Like, starting grade four playing trumpet and like concert bands and stuff and just literally continuously playing that for like my whole like grade school era. Mm. It's so cool. Um, for me, I guess, like I've always loved listening to music and uh, enjoying it, I guess, but my brother and father played guitar and I sort of didn't really have much of an interest when I was younger, but as I got older, I kind of wanted to pick it up a bit more. So I got my first guitar and fiddled around with it for a bit. Um, and then when I was about, I guess in grade 10, I played my first show that I like sang and just uh, hilariously enough, it was Wonderwall. <laughs> Thanks, Rakeem. You can catch that podcast at 10 p.m. on Friday. In this week's hashtag trending, we aren't talking about Valentine's Day. This week, our trending team took a look at the most Canadian controversy other than SNC Lavalin. Jacob Coffin is here to tell us why some people don't want to roll up the rim. Hello and welcome to Hashtag Trending. My name is Jacob Coffin and this week we are looking at the great Canadian tradition of the Tim Hortons Roll Up the Rim contest which began on February 6th. Some Canadians took to Twitter to express the situation they found themselves in, like Rachel Young, who said, Roll up the rim season, a.k.a. I swear I don't have a gambling problem. I just love Tim Hortons. Others shared their stories of how they won, like Vanessa Vidal, who said, Two peeps cut in front of me at Tim Hortons today. Albeit annoyed, I let it go and ordered my usual when it was my turn. A little later, I rolled up my rim to find this, all thanks to them placing their orders first. However, there are some who are calling on the restaurant chain to revise how it handles the contest. At that, Mr. Neal on Twitter commented, I cannot wait to see the thousands of Tim Hortons roll up the rim cups littering the city streets. The only thing worse than Tim Hortons is the environmental mess it leaves for us to clean up. Others have joined in, including a change.org petition to ask the company to invest in a fully recyclable and compostable cup. Tim Hortons has yet to respond with roll up the rim ending on April 17th. For Hashtag Trending, I'm Jacob Coffin. Back to you, Jack and Jen. Thanks, Jacob. All right, Jen, are you still planning to roll up the rim? I am two for three, so I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Fair enough. Well, that's our show for this week. From everyone here at WTV, we wish you a happy Valentine's Day. You can catch the episode on Facebook and check out our radio feature stories there. Then head over to Twitter for a sneak peek behind See the scenes. See you next week.